Hello and welcome to the video lecture series brought to you by St. Andrews Institute of Technology and Management. My name is Ravinder. I am an assistant professor with the TC department and we are discussing the subject called Object Technologies and Programming. And today we are going to discuss the data types that are used in Java. But before that, uh, we will continue from the last lecture, the introduction to the Java. It is a uh, few of the things that I have uh, that I uh, not uh, that I want to uh, mention here that how the file system in Java works. Okay, so let me head to your configure. So this is how it is. Now in the last lecture, I have uh, told you about a very simple Java code. That is, I have initiated a class called first, and inside the class we have a method called main. And inside the main method, we have a single statement that is your standard out console output statement that is system.out.println, which is going to uh, output the string my first program in Java to the console. Okay, now this particular how to run this file and what actually happens when we try to run this file. So if you are using this particular any particular type of ID or anything. All you have to do is save the file and just push on the run button. And if you are not using any kind of IDE, then how you are going to run this particular file? So let's head back to the compiler. So what we have to do is we have to save our file by the name of the file and after that the extension called dot Java. Suppose the example that we have seen in the last lecture the name of the class is uh, first let me also name my file as first so the complete name of my file must be first dot java now this is your java file this java file is actually compatible with your java compiler your java compiler is the software which has ability to decode your java syntax and it helps to convert it into a middle level code which is actually understandable by us another software called java virtual machine which then converts it into the machine readable form okay so this is how it works so first you are going to save your file as uh, let's say your name is first file name of the file is first then you will save it as first dot java then you will go to your console and inside the console you are going to type a, a particular a keyword called java c as you can see here java c now java c actually calls the java compiler java c calls the java compiler and after a single space, you will type the name of the class that is first dot Java. So the complete uh, statement will be Java C space and then Java, uh, first dot Java. And when you are going to hit the enter button, Java will uh, Java's compiler will actually decode your Java file dot Java file and convert it into a middle language code that is somewhat near to machine language but not exactly and that code is actually called the byte code now byte code is much more elaborate than your actual java code byte code actually encompass or enclose all the other required files okay all the other required files which are actually invisible to you when you first write your java code Okay, when you first write your Java code, that is, you have written system dot out dot print uh, uh, dot print ln. So what Java compiler is going to do? It is going to insert the it is going to insert the statements which will actually import those packages in which or those library in which the standard input output statements are actually defined, which are otherwise invisible to you. You don't need to worry about them, but I am just uh, 
saying this to you to make you understand what is bytecode. So bytecode is all the stuff which is actually hidden by the user, not hidden for the user, and inserted by and inserted by the compiler itself for its own use. Okay. Now that class which is now been compiled by the java compiler is converted now into a some other type of file called bytecode file and the extension of that file is now dot class so your actual file is first dot java it has been compiled by your java compiler using the uh, command called java c now it has been converted to some other file Actually, it will not be converted to some other file. You will see a, another copy of the file which has an extension of dot class. So that other file will be called as first dot class. So name will remain the same, but extension will change. First, it, it is dot Java. Now it is dot class. So byte cloud, you can look out and it will be created in the same folder, same address at which your original Java file is. So along with your Java uh, first .java file, you will see another file called first.class. Now this is your byte code class. Now this byte code class is understandable by the Java virtual machine that is JVM. This Java virtual machine is actually the software which is able to read the byte code. Now byte code is actually uh, quite a supporting file okay so after the byte code the code is actually quite flexible and transportable why I'm calling it transportable or uh, flexible because uh, this is the main uh, property of Java that that makes it makes it so powerful that byte code is actually can be run on any machine which is enabled with JVM. Okay, so you, you don't need any specialized uh, software to run this kind of, and mostly browsers are enabled with JVM. So you don't need to do anything extra to run any bytecode class. So all you have to do is just compile your uh, application, there your Java class, and it will be converted to your uh, bytecode, and that bytecode could be uh, sent over with your HTTP request and that could be run as an API in any of the browser. So the, that is why uh, Java is so um, browser friendly. It is mainly used for internet development. So let's get back to the data types. Now data types in Java. First type of data types in Java are uh, is the integers. Now this group actually includes uh, uh, byte, short, int, and long. Now these are used for whole values which are side numbers. A byte short int and long uh, does not doesn't include any decimal parts uh, and these names are actually signifying that these are uh, all of type integers but signifies the different ranges so byte signifies a shorter range then uh, somewhat larger range to short and then int and then long we will in a moment we will see what are those ranges so let's go to the integer ranges first all the four integer data types by uh, the byte short int and long are actually signed that is they are both positive and negative <coughs> sorry java does not support any unsigned integers uh, the byte be the smallest integer uh, this is actually a 8 bit type with a range from minus 128 to plus 127 so as you can see there if you want to uh, assign your variable as of, as of type byte or you want your data of, of type byte, you have to keep that thing in mind that the only allowed range that your particular data type can handle is from minus 128 to 127. Okay. Next is your short. Now short is your 16th sign bit type integer, which has a range from 32,768 to minus 32,000, uh, minus 32,768 to plus 32,767 okay as I have told you before only the range of your data differs in all these uh, types of different data uh, variable types or data types next is your int this is the most widely used 
integer variable that is int its range is quite large that is minus 214748364821474836472 214748364721474836472 it is a 32 bit data type so as you can see i am uh, telling you that it, the the byte is a 8 bit data type the short is 16 bit data type the int is 32 bit data type so all these things signifies the amount of memory that a variable which is which is of type int short or byte would uh, would be assigned with so if you have declared a variable of type uh, byte your compiler will actually assign a memory of equal to one byte for it that is 8 bit if you are if you have declared a variable of type short the compiler will assign the memory of equal to two bytes that is 16 bit and if it is of int then four bytes will be assigned for that particular variable a long is even larger with a larger uh, range but the total uh, the memory that is being assigned is 64 bit that is around 8 bytes so as the memory assigned to it increases in size as will be the range now next type of data is floating point type the floating point data type actually includes your float and double these two only <coughs> sorry differ in the ranges only so let's see what about are their ranges now float represents the single precision value it uses 32 bit of storage it can be useful when you need a fractional component but where the degree of precision required is not very high a float variable is declared with float keyword and the example is straight as the float max and min so max and min are the variables which are declared as float the double precision is denoted by the keyword double it uses 64 bits to store a value all transcendental mathematical functions like sine, cos, square root, etc. returns double values. So must keep in that thing in mind that uh, using those math functions actually returns you the double values. So the double precision is actually faster than single precision on some modern processor today. So that is why it is advisable to use double more than float. Next data type is your characters. Now character is a single alphabet. Remember? that uh, the character in java is different than c++ when the character is an integer which occupies 8 bits in java unicode is used to represent the character the unicode defines a fully international character set that can be represented uh, that can represent all the characters found in all human languages therefore the character data type requires 16 bits the range of character is from 0 to 65536 okay there are no negative character data types even though character is not treated as integer, you can add characters and increment the value of character variables. We will see an example of that in the in the uh, examples when we are going to deal with the strings. Okay. Last but not the least is the boolean data type. The boolean data type has only two values, that is true or false. I think you people are more than familiar with the boolean data types. If any conditional results in uh, uh, results are successful, then it has been termed as true or if any conditional statement result is false, it is is uh, termed as false. <coughs> now next is your variable declaration. We have talked about the data types, but how to declare a variable of such a type. The variable is a basic unit of storage in a Java code. All variable must be declared before they are used. Now general form of declaring a variable is, you must first uh, device or uh, identify what is the type of the variable that you want. That is what type of data that particular variable is going to hold. Now Java is very hard scripting, hard, uh, hardly coded language, hardly written language or strictly written language I would say. Okay? That means you cannot get away uh, by uh, writing or identifying your variable as a, of a particular type and then assigning a value of different type. So that is not permissible in your Java. So what you have to do is you have to identify the type of uh, the data which is going to be stored in your variable. Now suppose int a is actually signifying that we are going to assign or we are going to declare a variable which has been named as a and which is going to hold the data which is of type integer. So the compiler as soon as it will see the declaration will actually assign four bytes of data for it. Why four? Because the type of the variable is integer. So this is how the variables are declared. We'll see an example, a live example in, in the next lecture, how it is done. We, we can, you can see an example here. That is int a 
uh, the variable a has been declared as of type integer and initialized with a value 10 and then after comma two more variables are declared that is b and c but b and c are not initialized they are just only declared they have no value right now okay so i think we will we are more than comfortable now with the declaration of the variables and type of data which are uh, allowed in java in the next lecture we are going to see a live implementation of all the details that we have covered up to now. Thank you.